Dividend stocks are incredibly popular. I own many dividend stocks myself, and I'm sure that many of you do as well. And while their steady stream of income can be encouraging, especially during economic downturns, they aren't perfect. And in this video, we'll discuss five reasons why you might want to avoid dividend stocks and put your hard-earned money elsewhere. It is commonly understood that companies that pay dividends, in particular those that pay very high or generous dividends, occasionally do so at the cost of being able to reinvest that money into their core business. The result of this is that a dividend stock often sacrifices share price appreciation in order to sustain their dividend payments. This means that although you are getting dividend payouts, the value of the stock itself may not appreciate at the same rate as a stock that does not pay a dividend. This is best exhibited in growth companies that tend to continuously reinvest their profits into expanding their businesses so they can generate even more profits than before. Dividend payers, due to the financial burden of the dividend payout itself, cannot reinvest that money and therefore may be sacrificing growth potential. And I use the phrasing dividend burden intentionally because there's nothing that a dividend buyer hates more than an unsustainable dividend that eventually gets slashed, which will most certainly send the share price spiraling downwards. A base dividend in many ways is an obligation and the result is that it can impact the growth potential of a stock over time as it eats into the funds available to a growing business. The next reason why you may want to look to avoid a dividend paying stock is that just because a stock pays a dividend doesn't mean that it's a quality business. And while it's true that many blue chip dividend payers that are frequently recommended on places like YouTube and elsewhere are incredibly resilient and profitable companies, the dividend itself is not indicative of a strong underlying business. When evaluating dividend stocks, the dividend yield itself isn't the most important factor, despite it being what a lot of new investors focus on. Instead, diving into the payment history of the dividend is more important, so that you can determine whether or not the dividend has been stable and growing over time, or if it's been cut and unpredictable in the past. You also want a dividend that has good earnings coverage, which ensures that the dividend is sustainable and not completely hampering the growth of the company. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Here using Simply Wall Street, we're taking a look at the Keg Royalties Income Fund, a popular higher end Canadian steak restaurant chain that was hit hard by the pandemic. While some investors may get drawn in by its over 7% dividend yield at time of recording, digging into its history shows that the pandemic resulted in significant dividend volatility, with the dividend being significantly cut before being eventually reinstated. Most importantly, however, is the balance sheet that is indicating that the company is not profitable, and so the dividend payments, while high, are unsustainable and representative of a massive percentage of the company's overall cash flows. This is an example of how a high dividend does not necessarily represent a strong business. Alternatively, let's take a look at the same details from one of the best dividend paying stocks on the TSX, in my opinion anyway, the Bank of Nova Scotia. While the dividend isn't as high as the prior example, it's still notable, but what's most impressive is how sustainable and stable the company is and how stable the dividend is. The history shows that a steady dividend has persisted throughout the pandemic and that it has consistently seen notable increases. More importantly, the dividend payout ratio is a comfortable 46% of the company's earnings, indicating that this dividend payer has a strong core fundamental business. So I ask you, with this, the most basic of additional due diligence you could possibly do, which stock would you rather own? Is the slightly higher dividend worth the risk? I, like many of you, don't think so. Once again, a higher dividend is not indicative of a strong core fundamental business. The next reason why you might want to avoid dividend paying stocks is that, despite what many people believe, dividends aren't free money. I've actually spoken about the dividend free money fallacy before, but I'll give a brief rundown here for people that are new to the channel. Basically, there's this misconception out there that when a company pays a dividend, that money kind of just comes from nothing, like the money appears out of thin air. That's ridiculous, of course, but there are many investors out there that haven't taken the time to actually consider where their dividend payout is coming from. They are, in fact, impacting the value of the share price, almost akin to automatically selling a portion of your assets and converting that value into dividend cash. The next reason why you might want to avoid a dividend paying stock is that, honestly, sometimes there's just something more appropriate out there for your portfolio. If you're looking for income producing assets, investment grade bonds often represent lower risk investments than dividend stocks, especially during times of market volatility. 
There's even the classic 60-40 rule, which advises that a balanced portfolio consists of 60% stocks and 40% bonds as a basis for those looking to have resilient portfolios capable of weathering the volatility of a general market. While many of those that are relatively new to investing have largely ignored the bond market, it does represent an opportunity to add some resilience to your portfolio, as bonds have traditionally been used to mitigate risk. So as a general rule of thumb, the closer you are to retirement, the more you might want to ensure that you have a healthy mix of quality bonds in your portfolio. Finally, dividends can have an impact on your taxes. Of course, if you're holding your dividend paying assets in a tax shelter or tax advantaged account, like an American IRA or a Canadian TFSA, this doesn't necessarily apply to you, but for everyone else, it's an important consideration. Before I dive too deep here, dividend taxation is incredibly complicated and highly dependent on where you're from and where you are investing, so I can't give any particulars here and must speak in a more general sense. It's worth noting, however, that many governments apply withholding taxes to foreign dividends, meaning that the dividends you receive from a foreign dividend payer may be reduced in comparison to someone who is domestic to that country. For instance, as a Canadian, if I invest in an American dividend paying stock, I will face a 15% withholding tax on that dividend. And that is a preferred rate due to a treaty that Canada has with the United States of America. Other investors from other countries may see withholding rates upwards of 30%. So it's very important that you fundamentally do your own research. And my next tip is that I think that you should check out this next video that I've got linked here. Because if you found this video interesting, there's lots to learn over there as well. The learning never ends in personal finance. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in this next video.